A way of life, a way of life, a way of life, a way of life. Islam is a way of life, a complete way. بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومواله وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to our program on our weekly program on Guidance TV with the Jins, the Black Magic and the Evil Eye. Now, um, sometimes سبحان الله we have these conversations with with family members about the Jins, about Black Magic, about the Evil Eye, and we. There are some people that when this conversation comes up, they'll say, well, this is not something in the Qur'an, the jinns uh, possessing people, it's not real, black magic is not real, the Qur'an says doesn't have any mention of that, or this, this wasn't available during the time of the Prophet so why is everybody so, so superstitious? Today, inshallah ta'ala, what I'm going to try to attempt to do is to clear up the misconceptions, the differences between superstitions and that which is fine within the traces of the Qur'an and the Sunnah, inshallah ta'ala. So, uh, today, bin Allah ta'ala, I want to go back to some of the authentic, authentic sources of the validity of black magic and how anyone can be affected by it because one of the conversations that we'll have is well oh father mother brother so if we just if you just make your salawat on time you will be saved from magic uh, you'll be saved from the jinn this these things will never ever bother you but this is just due to a lack of understanding and inshallah ta'ala today we're going to try to attempt to learn a little bit more about the validity of uh, black magic and the realness of black magic the threat that black magic has on different people and who is really saved who is really saved from having black magic from being afflicted by the trials and tribu tri tri tribulations of black magic that's the question who is really truly saved who is really truly saved when we come to think about it so I want to go inshallah ta'ala to the most authentic of all authentic sources and this is the Quran the Prophet Sallallahu himself was afflicted by black magic. Yes, the Prophet Sallallahu was afflicted by black magic. And I'm going to be going inshaAllah Ta'ala through the tafsir of Surah Al-Falaq and Surah An-Nas. And I'm going to be using the tafsir of a uh, uh, dear beloved Shaykh of mine. Is uh, called the Tafsir Hadaiq Ruh Wal Rihan, the uh, Tafsir of the Garden of uh, of Ruh and Rihan. These are uh, beautiful smells and uh, good tasting flowers that are in the Jannah. And uh, he, uh, the author of this Tafsir, is uh, Sheikh Muhammad Amin Al Harari, and he compiles from different taf Tafsir of the language, the different Tafsir of Balagha, he uh, di uh, different. Tafasir of um, Nahu, different Tafasir of Sarf, compiles of different Tafasir uh, like Al Bahr al Muhayt, Ibn Kathir, etc., etc., etc. So it's a compilation of work, and the Tafsir, um, I have a copy of it right here called Hada'iq al Rahu al Rehan. Um, it is uh, approximately 32 volumes. It is 32 volumes, and that does not include the introduction, which is um, one volume within itself. It has a different uh, styles of recitation of Quran in it, etc., etc., etc. It is a very, very in-depth, in-depth tafsir for those of you who are students of knowledge and would like to further your study, inshallah ta'ala, in different tafsir. It is definitely a tafsir that you, inshallah ta'ala, want to look into. Um, so surat, we're going to start with Surah Al-Falaq and then we're going to move inshallah ta'ala towards the second part of the show into Surat Al-Nas. And they are, they are very, very, very important surahs when it comes to black magic, when it comes to Ruqya, period. Very, very, very important surahs. And uh, so inshallah ta'ala, uh, we want to go into some detail and yes it will take the entire hour in the light ta'ala so we're going to start inshallah ta'ala with surah al-falaq surah al-falaq the falaq means the splits to split in half 
So, um, and uh, a lot of times when you hear the trans, when you read the translations, it'll say the dawn, and see the dawn is the split between dark and night. Uh, some of the Mufassirin say it's a, it's a, like the split between life and death, uh, but uh, it's a split nonetheless. As um, uh, and Surah Farak is a Madani Surah. Ibn, uh, there's a difference of opinion on whether it's Madani or Mecki, and some people, some of uh, 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 Ibn Mardawi uh, says that it was. Uh, he says in two different uh, occasions, one that it was Mecki, one that it was Madini. But based on the evidence that is there, uh, it is apparent that this surah is a Madani surah, meaning it was revealed in Medina due to uh, who it was addressing. It was addressing someone in particular. Um, surah Al-Falaq has five ayahs and it is the 113th surah in, um, in the chronological order of the uh, Quran um, and the entire surah is still applicable to everyone today because you in the Quran there is the Nasikh and the Mansukh and this is something that we're not going to get into in this show inshallah ta'ala but for those of us uh, who, um, are, who know what this means this is uh, the, 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 the ahkam, the rules of surah Al-Falaq are all applicable to us today. So as for the the favors, the benefits of Surah Al-Falaq, uh, they have the Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Nas have some amazing benefits. Subhanallah, we'll find it in the traces of the Sunnah. We'll find it in in, in the practices of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and some of the statements of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on how Surah Al-Falaq has some amazing, amazing benefits and amazing, amazing, amazing fadail. Uh, number one, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam one time said, uh, two surahs will reveal to me today that were or tonight that were never revealed to me anything like it before, um, and no one will recite anything more beloved, meaning beloved to Allah subhanahu wa taala, than these surahs, amazing surahs. With amazing benefits. So, um, the Prophet ﷺ said that these surahs are Surah Al Falaq and Surah An Nas. Amazing benefits. The first of them is the Prophet ﷺ himself said that you will not recite anything that is more beloved to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Surah Al Falaq. Surah Al Falaq. And, uh, and by the hadith of uh, Ibn Daris and uh, Ibn Al-Ambari and Hakim uh, that uh, Hakim uh, authenticated it and Ibn Maradawi said in Shab that um, Aqba bin Amr radiallahu ta'ala said I asked the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to recite to me Surah Yusuf and Surah Hud very long surahs each surah about 10 pages long so it's approximately 20 pages, no, appro- actually approximately almost 30 pages from the Qur'an. And um, uh, Aqba bin Amr said that he wanted to listen to about 30 pages of the Qur'an from the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Ya Aqba, iqra qul a'udhu bi rabbil falak, fa innaka lan taqra'a suratan ahabba ila Allahi wa ablaga minha. Recite Surah Al-Falaq. For indeed, you will not recite a surah that is more beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and more eloquent than it. So, and then if you are able to not allow it to pass you up, then don't let it pass you up. These surahs are amazing. Do not let them pass you by. They are small, they are simple to recite, easy to memorize, but Full in their meanings. Surah Al-Falaq and Surah An-Nas. Um, so, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this hadith is narrated by uh, Abi Habis Al-Juhani, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, O oh, Abi Habis, I will inform you on the most, uh, the, 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 the best thing, the most beneficial thing that you can seek refuge in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala with, and that is Surah Al-Falaq. He said, oh, of course, Rasulullah, he said, Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas. Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas. The most beautiful thing, 
the most beneficial thing that you can seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with is Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas. So, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself used to use different mu'awwidat for himself, for his grandchildren, for, for anyone who he wanted to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. He would continuously do this until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down Surah Al-Faraq and Surah Al-Nas. Then he used to use Surah Al-Faraq and Surah Al-Nas to seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the shayateen and from the different things. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to use this to get rid of the evil eye. He used this as the remedy this is what he used as the remedy not a remedy the remedy when he wanted to get rid of his black magic which was a tremendous type of magic this was not just any type of magic as we're going to talk about um, later on inshallah ta'ala when we get into the tafsir of the surah so uh, in the uh, Malik, Rahman, Imam Malik Rahman, in his Muatta, narrated by Ibn Shihab and Arwah, narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, um, whenever he would complain of something or whenever, we ha- when he, whenever he had an issue, he, um, a, a, medical, a medical issue or any type of pain, he would go and recite the Mu'awidhatin, which are Surah Al-Falaq and Surah An-Nas. And this um, this was also the same thing that uh, many of the other um, scholars have authenticated that the Prophet Sallallahu we used to use this in, so in both, uh, whenever he would have any type of difficulty as a general ruqya, as a general spiritual healing, he would use this in order to um, heal himself and cure himself from any type of illness whatsoever, subhanAllah. Two simple surahs. The Prophet ﷺ saw them as the remedy for any type of problem. So, inshaAllah Taala, as we're going to um, uh, as we're going to find out, as we're going to learn, the uh, these are seeking re- these 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 muawwidatain is the perfect way to ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to save you from any type of harm and any type of evil inshallah ta'ala we're going to um, go into it bin Allah ta'ala right after this next break Be- we'd all like to have the reward of someone entering into Islam but we can't always be there you can't always travel around with me and I wish you could but there is something you can do and it travels around with you that's to download the apps, and then you can support your favorite project. Yes, we do have the many websites, over 2,400. We have the free Quran and the CDs, and the mail-outs of the Quran and the CDs. Also, the pamphlets, and of course, our internet website, and our satellite television, and now the antennas. All of these things are available we're making it free for everybody, and you can help me do that. You can support. You can support this project. It's called Donate for Islam. That's the name of it, and you can go to that website right there. See it? Donateforislam.com. Support. Maybe you'd like to support the television channel. See the camera right there, right? Okay. So you'd click on that. And it will tell you how you can support by the minute. Whether it's an hour, half an hour, 15 minutes, support that. And you'll get the reward for all those who are watching it during that time. Thousands, hundreds of thousands, and even millions of people watching our programs, watching our channel, and coming to Islam. And you can be part of it. Join me, won't you, on DonateForIslam.com. A way of life, a way of life, a way of life, a way of life. Islam is a way of life, a complete way. 
بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومواله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome back after this break right here on Guides TV and we are talking about the tafsir of Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas and how important and how, how important and how uh, they are when it comes to Ruqya, the black magic, the jinns and the evil eye and how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself used to always seek refuge in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala from the, uh, from the shaitan with these two blessed surahs. Now the, the phones are up and running and, uh, that you can call in inshallah ta'ala to ask your questions. 800-651-4814. This 1-800-651-4814. In the meantime, inshallah ta'ala, I'll be going through the tafsir of Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Nas. So the reason of revelation for the um, ayah. The reason for the revelation uh, of the ayah is that the or the reason for for the revelation of this surah is that um, there was a Jew in Medina during the time of the Prophet sallallahu and this happened approximately the seventh year after Hijrah. So this was during the later times of the of the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Some of them were um some of them were definitely um uh, the, the, uh, the the place was still filled with jews and the the, the place was still filled with mushrikun and so on and so forth and the 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 the, the battles haven't yet uh completed but there was a lot of hostility between the muslims and the jews during that time uh primarily because the muslims were on the brink of war uh during that time and we wanted to make sure uh and they uh, uh they wanted to get whatever it is they could get um so they made sure they could get to the prophet sallallahu by pretty much any means necessary so um the surah was revealed by uh, 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 the reason for revel- for revelation or the incident rather for revelation was there was a man who was a Jew during the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam um and his name was Labid ibn al asam and he was um, he was the one who did performed black magic on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and also the uh, the servant of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who was working for him at the time, a young boy, was also one of uh, one from that same tribe, and so the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had a comb. This comb. Um, had some hairs of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on it. When this young boy got a hold of the hairs of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was commanded and he was told and he was instructed to go to Labid ibn al-Asam and give him these hairs, which he performed black magic on these hairs of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then, on top of that, he took those hairs and he took the knots and he recited the he used what he, whatever it is he used in order to perform black magic his daughters were the ones who who were reciting the verses of shirk on the knots and it was 11 knots in a rope or string total they took the black magic with the comb with the hairs of the prophet sallallahu wasallam and put it in a well called mauna the Prophet Sallallahu was affected by it by perhaps three days, perhaps uh, three months, perhaps six months. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala knows best, but he was affected by it. And so, regardless, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu on a specific night, Surah Al Falaq and Surah Al Nas. Before these surahs were revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu one of the things that the Prophet Sallallahu did was he performed, he went and he got what is called cupping done. What cupping? Because he didn't know what was wrong with him. He felt what the, the symptoms that he had was that he, uh, of course he had pain based on a hadith that we're going to talk about inshallah ta'ala, he did have pains which is very common for people who suffer from black magic and are bewitched and have uh, problems with the jinns. Secondly, he would feel as if he went to his wives and had intimacy, intimate relationships with his wives, but he didn't necessarily have them. And so he would think that he went to them, and uh, the reality was he didn't. These were the effects 
of the black magic on the Prophet ﷺ. What it was meant for, the black magic was meant for him to either die or to go crazy. Neither of these happened. Walhamdulillah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves you or exempts you from people. And we're going to talk about the actual definition of that and how that applies here with this ayah. Inshallah ta'ala later on. So based on a hadith both in Bukhari and Muslim, that uh, Ibn Abbas and Aisha radiallahu anha both uh, narrated that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was affected with black magic that he was afflicted with black magic and he would think that he would go to his wives and he did not go to his wives and one night one angel while he was sleeping uh, in a dream an angel came to him and sat at his head and another at his foot the first angel asked him the first angel asked the other and I quote he said um, a man, uh, رجلان فجلس أحدهما عند رأسي. Two men came to me. One of them sat at my head, والآخر عند رجلي. The other one at my feet. ثم قال أحدهما لصاحبه. One of them said to his companion, ما وجع الرجل. What is the pain of this man? قال مطبوب. He said he's sick or bewitched. He said قال ومن طبه. And who bewitched him? قال لبير من أعصم اليهودي من بني زريق. He said he was Labir bin A'asam, the Jew from the children of Zuraiq. قال في ماذا؟ قال في مشطم ومشاطة وجف في طلعة ذكر. قال فأينه؟ He said it was in a uh, it was in a a, a a a comb and some hair from the comb. And he said and where is it? He said it is في بئر ذروان and uh, it is in the well of ذروان. And some of the narrators said that it is in the well of Zuraiq. Regardless. So the Prophet فذهب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في أناس من أصحابه إلى البئر فنظر إليها وعليها نخل. Um, when he went, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he went to this well with some people and some of his companions to the well and he looked in it and there were, um, uh, there were palm leaves there. ثم رجع إلى عائشة فقال والله لك أن ماءها نقاعة الحناء. and so he went back and he said it's as if its water is like حناء it's like green and moldy it looks disgusting. ولك أن نخلها رؤوس الشياطين and the 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 leaves of the trees it's as if they are the faces of devils. قلت يا رسول الله فأخرجه قال ما أنا فقد عافاني الله أما أنا فقد عافاني الله وشفاني وخفت أن أثير على الناس منه شرا وفي رواية المخاري أنه كان يرى أنه يأتي النساء ولا ولا يأتيهن. so she said well then get it out. he said Allah سبحانه وتعالى has cured me from it and he has given me the strength to overcome it. And I'm worried that other people will be afflicted uh, by its evil. Um, so, this is the worst type of sihr. This is the reason for revelation, and this is the the type of sihr, the type of magic that was that happened for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This was the most difficult and the worst of them all. So, we're going to go into the literal translation of the surah. And then we're going to go into its explanation and how the Prophet ﷺ was relieved from this black magic. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد Say, I seek, say, O Muhammad, I seek refuge in the Lord of the split and which we talked about before uh, can mean the split of many different things. Uh, in this instance, uh, the most authentic is actually the split of dawn. Min shari ma khalaq. 
from the evil that he created yes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created both good and evil Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything one of the uh, ways of understanding of the Mu'tazila and actually they had their own narration of the recitation of the Quran which was min sharrin ma khalaq um, uh, which means from the evil of his creation but this is a um, a fabricated narration with which has no basis and the actual translation uh, is the, the evil min sharri ma khalaq from the evil that he created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created both good and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created evil wa khalaqa kulla shay as he says in the Quran and he created everything everything yes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did create everything wa min sharri ghasiqin ila waqab and from the evil that becomes evil and this usually min sharri ghasiqin ila waqab in the tafsir of hadaiq al ruh wal rihan where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says um, after min sharri ma khalaq he says min sharri ghasiqin ida uh, min sharri ghasiqin ida waqab wa min sharri laylin mukhtalitun zalamuhu shadidatun zulmatuhu and the evil that at night um, it's different it has different Glows, so you have the light and you have the darkness, and you have so you have, for example, the the moon, the full moon, and then you have parts of the moon that are covered with black clouds. But then you have the full moon. But then you have the moon that goes away. So three three different stages: the full moon, the moon that's covered, the moon that's covered with black clouds, clouds which you can still see it. But then the moon that's completely covered. That moon that's covered with partial black clouds is called غاسق إذا وقب meaning the evil that ha- that is that is on the brink of becoming fully evil the deed that we're about to do the deed that someone is about to do and they're contemplating doing, doing it but they have not yet done it okay so this is the غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر نثاثاتي في العقد and from the evil so the first is the evil when it is about to become evil when it's becoming evil when there's uh, when there when it's clouded with some good and some bad the second is the evil of the سحر ومن شر النفاثات في العقد and from the evil of the ladies who blow in the knots here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the ladies who blow in the nuts because it were the it was the daughters of Labid ibn al-Asam who actually blew into the nuts for this formula of black magic. And lastly but not least, Women Shari Hasidin Ida Hasad and from the evil of the envier when he envies. Now let's go into some of the uh, linguistic meaning of or the, some of the uh, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is delivering this message, message. first Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here he says say O Muhammad I seek refuge in the Lord of min sharri uh, bi falaq, the Lord of the splits notice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here did not say I seek refuge in Allah the God of the split. Rather, he said, the Lord of the split. Here, um, in basic aqidah, we're talking about Tawheed al rububiyyah The oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that pertains to His Lordship. Meaning, He is the Creator, He is the, st- the Sustainer, He is the Master, He is the Provider. And he is the judge. All of the, uh, he is the, uh, all of these things are the attributes of the Lord. Right? But, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say the God. Why? Because these things that we're about to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to seek refuge from all have to do with Him providing us, sustaining us, Protecting us, etc., etc., etc. So he said, "I say, I seek refuge in the Lord of the split, the split between uh, good and evil, 
the split between night and day, the split between darkness and light. So we're seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from uh, I'm, you, fa, qul you were seeking the refuge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Lord of both good and evil subhanallah in such small but tremendous uh, such a small but tremendous delivery say I seek refuge in the Lord of the split between any type of um, opposite from what? Min sharri ma khalaq. From the evil that he created. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created fire. Fire burns. Fire we cook with. Fire we will help us to eat. Fire keeps us, keeps us warm. Right now, I'm here in, in the state of Michigan. It's very cold. And subhanAllah, it'll be very difficult to live without some fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Iblis. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created heaven and he created hell. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything. And so just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created evil, he can also protect us from that evil. And he's the only one that can do it. Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created good, he can keep the good, good around us and thwart off and protect us from any type of evil because he is the creator of it he is the lord of it he is the master of it he is the maintainer of it now there's, there are a few things that we have to look at when it comes to evil uh, Imam Dhabi uh, ta'ala wrote in, in, in one of his books over 70 things 70 benefits of for example the shaitan himself Iblis the devil 70 benefits for having the devil one is that there would be no test, there would be no trial, we would all be the same if there was no devil. And we would not have, we would not be any different. And there would be very little between us and the angels if there was no devil. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us mankind as unique. And we were created from the best of ingredients. And we don't have enough time to go into all of the different benefits of bad. But to say the least, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alif la mim, ahasib al nasu an yutraku an yakulu amanna wa hum la yiftanun. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Laqad khalaqna al insana fi kabad. The first ayah is, Do people think that they can say that they believe and they will not be afflicted with trials? And the second ayah is we have created mankind in hardship. So there is evil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created both good and he created evil. Evil is something that we need. Evil is something that helps us with our better. It helps us become better. It helps our learning process. It, it, it enhances our patience. It enhances our taqwa. Without it, we wouldn't know the difference between evil and good. For example, take someone who only knows that they can get whatever it is that they want. They don't understand the concept of not having. They may hear about it. They may see it happen to other people, but they don't truly understand it. For the people who have gone through a lot, they know the results of what evil can become, where evil can take you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Min sharri ma khalaq, From the evil that He created. We are seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil that He created, which means anything. A dog biting you can be that evil. You getting sick can be that evil. You hurting can be that evil. You going and doing the wrong thing can be that evil. You falling into something that's harmful can be that evil. Any type of evil, you're seeking refuge in Allah SWT from any type of evil. وَمِن إِذَا وَقَبْ From the evil that's a little flimsy, that has a little bit of truth to it, that has a little bit of good in it, 
the evil that we say, oh, the ends are going to suffice the means. No. We seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the ends that don't suffice the means. Because we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, udkhulu fi silmi kafah. Oh, you who believe, come into Islam all of the way. Don't come half stepping like they say. So come into it all of the way. Come into it completely. Do what you're told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you. And submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one and only Lord, the one and only God, the one and only King. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to seek refuge in Him from the evil that has some good in it. Some ev- the, and sometimes the evil that we have not yet committed. Seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from even those thoughts. The next is وَمِن شَرِّ النَّفَّاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ So the first type of evil which is the worst of them. And that is the evil of His creation. Or the evil that He created. The second type of evil is the evil that looks like it has some good to it. The third type of evil is the evil of magic. The evil of seeking refuge in Allah is seeking refuge in the jinn, worshipping the shayateen, harming other people from behind closed doors, using shirk to harm others. The fourth of them is Wamin Sharri Hasidin Ida Hasad from the evil of the envious person when he envies. And we talked about that before. How envy can destroy someone, can corrupt someone, can harm someone. But it's something that someone does without having the bravery of coming forth and saying, I really don't like you what you have and I wish that I had it instead of you. This person may seem to be a friend of yours, but yet they don't want anything good for you. And this doesn't happen all of the time. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَمِن شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حسد. When he's envious, this envious person, when he's envious, you seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here has put four different types of evil in the sequence of their effect. The first of them is the evil that is harmful, uh, the evil that is harmful to us physically or mentally. The second, that evil that is cloaked with some good. The third is the evil of black magic, of being afflicted by black magic. The fourth is the evil of being afflicted by the envier when he or she is envious. And the surah goes as follows. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقَ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقَ وَمِنْ شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبِ وَمِنْ شَرِّ النَّفَّاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ وَمِنْ شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدٍ So, the next surah is Surah An-Nas. Now, there, uh, there, are, uh, there, were 11, there were a total of 11 different knots in the magic that was given, that was made for the Prophet ﷺ that was put in Zuraiq, uh, the, the, uh, the well of Zuraiq. The reason why it was, uh, well, it was 11 ayahs and the, the verses, all 11 of them, uh, Surah Al-Falaq is 6 verses and Surah Al-Nas is 5 verses. They all equal up to, I'm sorry, Surah Al-Falaq is 5 verses and Surah Al-Nas is 6 verses and they all equal up, equal up to 11 verses total and those are the amount uh, of knots that were in the uh, black magic that was made for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 11 ayahs each ayah for a knot and that's and we'll talk about the meaning behind that inshallah ta'ala as what is to come now before we go on this break I want to clarify something 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Wallahu ya'asimuka minan nas. Allah exempts you, O Muhammad, from the people. Now, some people will interpret this as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exempts you, O Muhammad, from any type of harm from people. But that's not the exemption that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him. And the evidences are as follows. Number one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exempted him from death until his message was completed. And the evidence is in his life until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the verse. اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم Today I have completed for you your way of life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in another ayah, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ When the victory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the opening come. All of these are indications that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa completed his message. And he was saved until his message was complete. Number two. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exempted him from going crazy. And the evidence is in his life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exempted him from making mistakes that applied to the rules and guidelines of the sharia, the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he was to be that that, that he was to relay to us. And when and if he made a mistake, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala corrected him. And the examples in that are in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Afallahu an kalima adintalahum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, forgiven you. Why have you um pardoned them? Um Ya ayyuhan nabiyu lima tu harrimu ma ahallahu lak. Oh Prophet, why do you make something haram for you that is halal? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala corrected him. But the Prophet ﷺ was exempt from going crazy and losing his mind and giving bad and wrong verdicts without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming and correcting him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exempted him from uh, dying without completing his message. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not exempt him from getting sick. As a matter of fact, the Prophet ﷺ was poisoned. He was sick at his deathbed. He was occasionally sick. During the battle of Uhud, he was hit and his uh, he lost uh, he lost some teeth, and uh, the the chain was the chain mail was stuck into his 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 his, uh, his jaw. The Prophet Sallallahu was hurt, and uh, even when he was even when he was uh, being treated by his daughter, she would take uh, uh, small pieces of fire and use it to close up his wounds. So these things happened. The Prophet ﷺ was afflicted. The Prophet ﷺ did have fevers. He did have stomach pains. He was hungry. And likewise with this, uh, the, the, the being afflicted with black magic and the evil eye and the jinns, these are simple sicknesses just like any other sicknesses. And the Prophet ﷺ was sick in this matter but Allah ﷻ still exempted him from being killed by people or being harmed by people or dying until his mission was Complete and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exempted him from making any wrong verdicts without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala corrected him and, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exempted him from going crazy. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a'lam, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to talk about the understanding of Surah Al Nas right after, inshallah ta'ala, this break. Barakallahu fikum. My name is Abu Hafsa Abdul Malik Claire, and if you don't know, you should know, you're watching Guide Us TV. But guess what? Guide Us TV is available on your phones now. It's available on your iPhone, on your iPod, on your iPad, on your Android, all over the smartphones. It is available on your App Store or your Play Store. It is FRWE free. Go there, download it, install it, play it, enjoy it, and share it. And remember, get guided with Guide Us TV. Now available on your app store, Guide Us TV. Go to your app store today. Search for Guide Us TV. Download.
and enjoy. A way of life, a way of life, a way of life, a way of life. Islam is a way of life, a complete way. بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومواله وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back to Guided TV and we're, we're here with our, our program with Jinn's Black Magic and the Evil Eye Our number is right up here on the screen 800-651-4814 That's 800-651-4814 Please do give us a call inshallah if you do have any questions related to the matter Today we're talking about the Prophet sallallahu and his experience with going through black magic Showing that no one, no one, there's no one that's exempt from it. No one that's saved from it. No one. Now the question arises, if I do my adhkar and I read Quran and I pray on time and I make tahajjud and I fast, will this help me at all from black magic? The answer is yes. It's absolutely, it will help you. It will help you. And this is through experience. This is not just uh, myself talking, but many, many people who um, have come and uh, they've come into my office and they are people who were afflicted with black magic, but they were people who were practicing. It was very easy for them to come out of it. Versus the people who had to start practicing from the beginning. It's like almost, it's almost, it feels like it's almost impossible sometimes when people uh, are just starting to practice after they've been afflicted by it. It's almost like, for example, if you get a chronic illness or any type of illness at that and you're accustomed to eating proper food, exercising properly, sleeping well, living in a good environment, dieting properly. When you get sick, you don't get sick like someone who eats junk, doesn't sleep, stressed out, bad environment, breathing bad air, drinking bad water. You don't get sick like these people. So, and but regardless, you're not exempt from these sicknesses. But when you do get sick, it's a lot easier for you to recover from it completely than it is for the other person who is not properly taking care of themselves. So yes, it does help a lot. But the difference is that you're not exempt from getting it, just like the Prophet ﷺ was not exempted from getting it. Now, inshallah ta'ala, it looks like we're going to have to actually wait uh, for the rest of the surah, uh, the rest of the, uh, the the other half of of this, is, which is surah nas, for next week, inshallah ta'ala. But nonetheless, when the prophet, what happened when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam recited these surahs, surah al-falaq and surah nas? It was a relief for the Prophet Sallallahu as the Prophet Sallallahu was reciting it each one uh, each ayah that he recited Ali ibn Abi Talib عنه, was told to untie a knot so what he did was قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقَ and he untied a knot مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقَ untied a knot وَمِنْ شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ and he untied a knot وَمِنْ شَرِّ النَّفَّاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدِ يَنْتَعِرَ نَعْتِ وَمِنْ شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدِ أَنْتَعِرَ نَعْتِ قُلْ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ أَنْتَعِرَ نَعْتِ مَلِكِ النَّاسِ أَنْتَعِرَ نَعْتِ إِلَاهِ النَّاسِ أَنْتَعِرَ نَعْتِ مِنْ شَرِّ الْوَسْوَاسِ الْخَنَّاسِ أَنْتَعِرَ نَعْتِ أَلَّذِي يُوَسْوِسُ فِي صُدُورِ النَّاسِ أَنْتَعِرَ نَعْتِ مِنَ الْجِنَّةِ وَالنَّاسِ أَنْتَعِرَ نَعْتِ And that is 11 knots. Uh, 5 ayahs for the first surah, 6 ayahs for the sec second surah, 11 ayahs each ayah, 
was untying a knot. And after the Prophet وسلم, recited Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas only one time, Jibreel والسلام, was also doing ruqya on him. Bismillah yubriq or Bismillah urqiq, Wallahu yashfiq. And he was reciting ruqya on him as the Prophet وسلم, himself was doing, uh, was reciting Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas. Then the Prophet وسلم, felt completely cured as if nothing had happened to him. The pains that he had due to it were completely gone. The trouble that he had that was due to it was completely gone. And so they were, the, the, the Prophet وسلم, was asked, Should we go and seek revenge? From Labid ibn Asam from Banu Zuraiq. And the Prophet وسلم, said no. He said no. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has cured me and nothing has happened to me. So I'm not going to seek any type of revenge or retaliation from the Prophet. You see, just to clear things up, some of the things that I said in the beginning of this episode. The the problem in Medina with the Jews of Medina wasn't the fact that they were Jews it was not at all it wasn't the Prophet ﷺ's hatred for the Jews because he didn't hate the Jews at all as a matter of fact the Prophet ﷺ had a neighbor who was a Jew and this neighbor every day would take her garbage and she would put it on the doorstep of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, nowadays, just put yourself in his shoes. This neighbor is a rude neighbor, an obnoxious neighbor. We have trouble dealing with, dealing with a neighbor who that, who's, who, who's that lady down the street that everyone uh, talks about. She knows that every, she knows that everyone's business. She knows who's moving in, who's moving out, who brought this, who brought that, out, who brought that, what type of groceries you brought, what type of, th- she knows everything about you and you can't stand her. Imagine yourself in the shoes of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dealing with a neighbor who was so rude and so obnoxious that she would take her trash and put it in front of your door. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not one to talk about her. He was not one to say, To the people, hey, look at this neighbor, what is she doing? Look at what she's doing to me. He was not one to sit down with the rest of his companions and to talk about how bad certain neighbors are. Instead, what do you think he did? He actually didn't complain. He didn't say anything bad to her. He didn't even look at her with the slight hiss of disrespect as a matter of fact all he did was cleaned up the garbage that the lady put down and he would do this every day and she would put the garbage on the on his doorstep every single day every day she didn't miss a day except for one day <coughs> one day she didn't put the garbage on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's doorstep. And so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam goes to her house. And he knocks on the door. And he asks how she's doing. And she was astonished. She was mind blown. I'm doing this to you and you're coming to me asking me how I'm doing after all of that. And so the Prophet Sallallahu said, I noticed that there was no trash on my front door today. And I just came to check and see if you were okay. What happened was she had a son who was sick. And she told her son, this is a good man. This is a good man. This is a good man. Listen to him. Do what he tells you. This is the example of the Prophet 
So the Prophet وسلم, are having problems or issues with people just because of their religion is all a fabrication and none of it is true. And there are many, many examples in the Sunnah of these things happening. We are um, in a time where these type of things do come out. But I wanted to make sure that I clarified towards the end. And unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to go through the entire Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas. But nonetheless, I wanted to make sure I clarified this, that there was no animosity from the Prophet ﷺ towards anyone. There was no animosity from the Prophet ﷺ towards the Mushrikeen, the pagans, the Christians, the Druze, nor even the hypocrites. As a matter of fact, he treated everyone, everyone, excluding no one, with dignity and respect. He backbited, he did not back, backbite anyone. Whenever he consulted with someone about an issue concerning someone else, it was only to solve a problem. And that was it. That was it. So, we are not advocates of problems. Nor was the Prophet wasallam. And we are running out of time for tonight. Inshallah Ta'ala. Next week we're going to talk about Bidnillah Ta'ala, Surah Al-Nas and the benefits of it and, and, and finalize how the Prophet wasallam was affected by the black jinns of the black magic and the evil eye. Aqulu qawli hadha wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And remember, get guided with Guide Us TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.